Now I don't think there's a lot of people who don't know what a ginkgo looks like, but this is what they look like. This is one grown from seed. Look at these leaves. These leaves are so characteristic. There's not another plant looking like it. And yeah, this is the end result of this video. This video shows a successful method of germinating ginkgo seeds. And in fact, it is not all that difficult. All you have to do, well, I'm going to show you in the video. This was from the first part of the video, the only one that survived. And that's why I went on and tried a different way. What am I saying? Six different ways comparing which method works best to get these to germinate. Fresh seeds, these I'm going to plant straight away. Seeds that I nick the seed coat off, peel seeds and plant those for fresh seeds and for dried seeds. How do you grow ginkgo from seeds? Well, for it, we need seeds. And that's why it's important that I now have a female tree here right behind me, because the ground around me is littered with ginkgo seeds. Ginkgo. This is one maybe eight or nine years from seed and grown as a bonsai and I've been pruning it every single year and I've made cuts making sure that the tree doesn't grow out as a very very big tree. This one is one year old and it's the only successful germination of a whole pot of seeds. On top of that I went out yesterday in the rain and I collected new ginkgo fruits. Horrible, smelly, ugh. This is the only outcome of last year. And I did create videos while I was in the park and showing where I got the seeds. And maybe you also like to know where I got the seeds. Let's jump back a year in time and see where did I get my seeds last year. Now, where did I get the seeds? I went out to a tree that I know close by in Enschede that has lots and lots of fruits. And on the ground, there's piles and piles of fruits. Isn't it glorious? Spring is back. And behind me, two very big ginkgo trees. And in fact, of these two big ginkgo trees, one of them is a female. It's one of the old tree species. These trees have been around for about 180 million years. Ginkgo seeds grow like a little nut, but they sit in a soft outer shell. The soft outer shell smells a little bit like, I don't know, spoiled milk. They're really not nice, so make sure you don't touch them with your hands. Have a look at this. This is how they come off the tree, either as a bare seed or in this purplish seed coat. So if you see this on the ground, good chances that this is above your head. Ideally, bring a baggie or, as I did here, a little cup to collect the seeds so you don't need to carry them in your pocket or in your hands. The result is a whole bucket full of seeds um, mixed with leaves and the outer skin still on. So I first need to clean it. As said, right, this stuff stinks. Um, it is smells like, I don't know, butter that has gone still. Butric acid, I think it is. Now what I'm going to do with a stick, I'm just going to stir this whole thing and twist it around, rub it against the wall. And you see already it becomes really an ugly paste. If you've done this and you know a better way of cleaning out the seeds from the dirt, let me know. This is what the seeds look like, reasonably clean. I'm going to wash them a couple of times. All the seeds that come floating to the surface, um, they have air in them. They might not be completely ripe. They might not be completely good. I'm just going to toss them and the rest, yeah, I'll clean out. So these are all cleaned up, washed four or five times. 
nothing left that I can see. Let's see whether I can disinfect these. To be honest, I don't think it is needed to disinfect the seeds, but you know what? It has been recommended on several websites, so I'll do it. This is just light chlorine. And I'll leave that sit for five minutes or so. While I was waiting, I have made it some labels, six labels. The ones that I'm going to put in dry and warm first and the ones that I'm going to use fresh. Scarified, whole and peeled. The whole has a straight edge, the scarified has a clipped edge and the peeled ones, two cut edges. I'm going to use six different ways to try and germinate these seeds. I'm going to take fresh seeds, which I'm fresh seeds. These I'm going to plant straight away. Then I'm going to take seeds that I nick the seed coat off and I'll plant those. And then lastly, I'm going to peel seeds and plant those. As said, for fresh seeds and for dried seeds. So I have filled my pots with just my normal substrate. This is just leftover substrate from last year that was dried and cleaned. Um, see my video on substrates in order to see what I do, but there's nothing special about it. And the first pot, as said, I'm just going to plant 10 seeds. I'm going to do 10 seeds in every single pot. Yeah, I should have 62, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Just like that. And then I'll cover these with substrate. And this is going to be the full and warm, right? So the whole, and I'm going to put it dry, warm for the first couple of weeks. Then I'm doing the same thing here, 10 seeds. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, and ten. And these I am going to just water fill up and then water and keep outside protected from animals for the rest of winter and see whether those will germinate. Now these I have not pre-treated. This is just as is. These are ready to go outside. And then the process of scarification. Basically what we want is to nick the seed coat so that water can enter. And the tip of the seed, and it's always difficult to see what the tip and what the bottom is. This is where it was connected to the plant. And this is where the root will start growing. So this is the part we don't want to damage. So what I'm going to do, I'm just taking a file and on the edge, I'm just going to gently make 10, 20 strokes so that the seeds get a little bit damaged. This way water can more easily enter and the seed can germinate. Twee, drie, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Spread them a little bit so they don't touch. And these are also ready to go. One, the last set is of course the most difficult ones and it is the one peeling it off. I am not convinced this is a great idea. Um, so as you can see, I just use pliers and I take the seat between the pliers and apply a little bit of pressure. The seat splits open and you can take the little nut out from the seat. This is now of course completely unprotected, so my guess is that these will all start rotting quite quickly. The ripening process of these seeds continues after they drop, so the embryo in the seed apparently continues to develop even after the seed has dropped from the tree. Um, for this they need a period of warmer temperatures 
after falling from the tree before they can germinate. And that seems to be the trick why some seeds don't germinate for a year. They need to get through summer first and then they need to get a cold phase. And that's basically what I'm simulating also with these pots that are going to go inside first for a couple of weeks. And then I'll bring them out into the late winter to start germinating in spring. I'm just going to plant these up, see how it goes. And then in a couple of months we'll have some answers on whether there's a difference between the different methods. My guesstimate is going to be that the peeled ones are not going to germinate all that well. I think these seeds will get damaged, they'll get infected by fungi quite a bit. Then I think the ones that I have not scarified at all will also not germinate all that well. And then the ones that I've filed and just nicked the edges without opening the seed up as I'm doing right now, I think those will do best. There, there's no option to penetrate. Uh, fungal infections are much, le much less likely. I think those will do best. But we'll see in a couple of months. Um, I am aware that these seeds are going to be quite slow to respond. Earlier, I've only had my germination somewhere around May. So it might be a while before this video is released. Right, last set of pots. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. And that's going to be dry and warm, the red one, and two edges off, fully clipped. Then this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is going to be outside and wet, edges clipped off, they are peeled. Now it's a matter of filling up, watering these and putting the other ones, I think somewhere in my study where it is 12, 13 degrees most of the time, unless I'm working then it might be 20, so you get a bit of a variability and yeah, wait until the next season. Middle of February. And I've not yet decided what I'm going to do with all these leftover seeds. So I'm just going to fill this pot. Every single one I'm going to just file a little bit and see whether I get these to germinate in spring. They've all been in this pot, pot for most of winter, sitting in the shed. They got frozen, they've been warm, they've been cold. So quite natural conditions, they've not dried out. Do you really want to see me do this a hundred times? I doubt it. So I'm just going to switch off the camera now, okay? First layer, and I still have loads. A bit of old substrate on top, not the roots. And fill the rest of the layer as well. Uh, and I guess I'll just make a second layer now. So, last year's seeds. I think this is clear, right? Mouse got into them, ate all the seeds away, others rotted out, none of these has germinated. Just some weeds have popped up, nothing nice. But let's, took, let's take a look at the other pots. I also had mice in there, so they are still standing under my bench with pieces of slate on top of it. But this morning, when I was watering, I saw something. And this is what I saw. One. Two, three, four, five germinating ginkgo seeds. This one is not participating anymore, I think. All of these have been eaten by mice. Could, of course, start digging and see whether there's anything happening. This one is not showing anything yet might be still coming and this one also here are a few seeds that were eaten by mice so first lesson learned protect from mice second lesson learned these red labels what were the red labels i really need to check what i did these are the first ones to come here there are still seeds in the ground No roots yet though. Um, it is now the first week of June, 
So these are really, really light to germinate. Now note, this year it's been a very, very wet and fairly cool spring. As I can't put these out in the open, they sit in a shaded position, so they also don't get direct sunlight. But this does look promising. Right. Time to bring this video to an end, I suppose. It's been going for a long time. If I now look at these pots, what do I see? Well, the ones that I straight away put outside, two of those have been attacked by mice. So that's the first conclusion. I really need to learn how to protect these pots better. That being said, this is the third one. And actually I didn't treat it at all. So it is the uncut label placed outside and watered directly. And I see one growing tip coming, two, three. So there's at least three that have germinated. And I know it is, I, I, I know there's still trees coming up, but it is what it is right now. We are now in July. It is time to draw the conclusion. And actually that's the second conclusion. These can take a long time to germinate. So don't give up too early, just leave them sitting out there. Then the ones that are first placed inside, and that's a little bit unfair because these were attacked by mice. Every single treatment has resulted in germinated seeds. These are the ones that I initially first broke the skin off and tried to peel partially. And I have three germinated seeds. Then the one that I filed, I have one, two, three germinated seeds as well. And the fourth one is opening up and actually was eaten after that. There's a little hole in the fruit. And then the one that I didn't treat at all, I have one, two, three, four, five germinated seeds. So not treating, putting your seeds in the substrate and then keeping them warm for a couple of weeks and then placing them outside or in a fridge if you want to, seems to be the best method from what I can see here. This is actually confirmed by this bowl, which has all the seeds that were left over last season that I just chucked in. And you can see, I've been putting slug repellent, slug poison actually, on the pots because I was having so many problems. That one actually is eaten by a snail. And this one seems to also have been attacked by a snail. One important thing to keep in mind is that even though these pots are full of nice seedlings, this really, really is too early to do anything. So they really need to grow out for a couple of weeks, maybe even months before I do anything else. Then at the end of summer or in winter, I will do some more work. So for now, I'm just going to let these grow and I'll show you in a couple of weeks what they look like. Well, it is July. Let's make up the final tally. Four, three, zero, one, four. One, two, three, four, five, five. This is of course nowhere near, oh, there's six actually. This is nowhere near the what, 45 or so that I'd hoped for based on the 60 that I planted. Still, it is better than nothing. And if you look at the seeds that I actually just plunked into a pot and didn't do anything, I just protected them from the mice. They're germinating quite well. I don't know how many seeds there are in there. It's two layers and you can see there's still new plants coming up. This pot might be filled to the rim by summer with seedlings. So in fact, growing them from seed is not difficult. Plant them in a pot, protect them well from the animals and place them outside for winter. And that should do it. I'm going to sign off now, but before I do, if you are wondering when do I do cuttings, when do I, do I grow from seed and when do I air layer, this might be the video for you. That's it for now. This was Jelle, growing bonsai. See you next time. And until then, keep growing bonsai.